What's up, my wizards? Dev back again from the place down there. We got spoilers again today. I've got to catch you up on a couple of things because I've been doing deck techs and such. So I have chosen 15 cards that I think will be really cool. That's about it. And I don't want the video to take three hours, so let's do that. Let's go. First thing I want to talk about is also one of the newest things. This is Brutal Expulsion, which, depending on what grade you're in, is either an awesome name or um, an excuse for bathroom jokes. Yeah, I think the card is actually really, really good in a lot of decks, or, you know, especially control decks. People keep talking about um, five color control and four color control. This slots right in very well. It's instant speed. That's really, really cool. And it sort of reminds me of Vincer in some ways, um, which, which is great, except for leaving, it doesn't leave behind a creature. It kills a guy, or even a planeswalker, which there are plenty of going around these days, so I think the card will almost certainly see standard play, just almost guaranteed. It would be silly to say otherwise. Here's From Beyond, which I do want to talk about because so many people are talking about it. Um, it's like Awakening Zone. That's the number one thing that I keep hearing about it, and yes, it kind of is, but you can go on the offensive with this. It's got that awesome tutor effect on it, so will it see standard play? I'm not really sure what that Eldrazi deck looks like right now, um, and is this in it? Maybe. Um, just the ability to put a Scion into play every turn, just every day they release more cards and Scions look more impactful. <laughs> so, because you know, not only do you need them to make mana to play the huge Eldrazi, you need them to activate abilities of other Eldrazi and stuff like that, so the Scions look important. But is this too slow, you know? I'm not really sure, although we are playing somewhat slow enchantments, Outpost Siege being the first thing that comes to mind. This costs the same thing and does really cool stuff for you, so I, I definitely could see a place for it. Quickly, Sylvan Scrying is back, yay. Here's March from the Tomb and R Allies officially has my attention. Let me play this in a deck with Rally and call it Rallies. That's what I want to do, um, with a big A or something. But anyway, yeah, the card is really cool. I've always liked cards like this and it's just begging to be broken. And if we get some good allies, which we haven't seen too much that impresses me thus far, but if we get some good allies, this might be really cool, especially some low kind of converted mana cost allies. That would be ideal, but we just haven't seen too much yet. We might get some in the next set. We'll have to see. We really need good enter the battlefield triggers for this card to be ideal. And something that gives everything haste. We do have like Kolagon, the Dragon Lord Kolagon, but I'm just not really sure. You know, Mardu allies, maybe. Here's Transgress the Mind. It's not Inquisition of Kozilek. I, it's not. It's not. Of course, of course it's not. That's okay, you guys. Um, for standard play, this is pretty awesome, I think. Especially with all the stuff we've seen so far, we keep saying, where are the safety valves? Here's one right here. It's totally cool. I do enjoy that the card exists, and it's sort of the inverse of Inquisition of Kozilek in that we can get things three or greater, which is really going to be important in this format, and could be important in other formats. I know that it costs uh, so much mana, two mana, but I don't think that it's bad. I, you know, will it replace Thoughtseize in the format? Probably not, but we'll have to see where the format goes, and I'm not entirely adverse to this. I know there's so much hate drawn towards this card because it's not Inquisition of Kozilek, and whatever. That's it's cool. Let's roll with the punches. This looks good in this format. Here's Prism Network, which, you know, I told you I was going to pick 15 cards that I thought might be impactful. I'm not really sure if this card is super impactful, but it might be. It reminds me of, like, Tangle Wire in some ways, which is cool. And that <laughs> pay five mana scry three, that's like, that's just really begging you to build the five color control deck that everyone wants anyway, so I, I'm not really sure that this is the thing or whatever, but I'm not really sure. It might be like sort of wizards like, go ahead and build five color control. It exists, you know, whether or not this goes in it, it exists. <laughs> so Scry 3 is super powerful, and this could see play in some commander decks too, so I want to throw that out there. But I'm just not really sure about it. It's the weirdest, coolest thing that we've seen in a while. Here is Exert Influence, another 5 mana blue thing that's splashable, that's interesting. Um, anyway, I, I actually really, really like this, um, even though it's a sorcery, uh, it should be a sorcery too, for, um, again, the 5 color or 4 color even control deck, because this is awesome, <laughs> it turns out. We can, um, even in 4 color control, nab a Siege Rhino and, and lots of other important things in the format, and for 5 mana we can nab almost anything in the format next to, you know, Dragonlord of Tarka and some of the bigger guys, but that's, that's not, that's neither here nor there. Back in the day, we used to really value these kind of control magic effects, um, specifically because they're not enchantments, and like um, Will Breaker and Sower of Temptation, those cards, you know, you gain control of the creature until this creature, Will, you know, Will Breaker, Sower, leaves play. Not the case here. In this case, you gain control of the creature, you have them forever. You just, you have them forever, not until a creature leaves play, not until they break the enchantment, just forever. And that's actually really, really important. And cool that this is splashable, another clue that we can play five color control. 
Here's exert influence right here, and I think this might actually go uh, as a one of in some main boards, depending on how the format shifts. We were wondering where all again where all the safety valves were. Here's a thing right here. Um, you know, this this definitely definitely helps against the incoming tide of Eldrazi that we see coming our way, um, and even some of the big creatures that exist in the format currently, including all the dragons and stuff, so that's really cool. And I think that it will definitely see play in sideboards, and is even, you know, curvy enough to see play in some aggro deck sideboards. I'll quickly touch on um, Shambling Vent and Misty Rainforest. Just Shambling Vent's really cool. You can turn it into a Liliana creature version that doesn't flip. That's kind of cool. Um, it's good to have a lifelink land, too, and I just, I love Orzhov, so I have to point it out. And Misty Rainforest, thank God that they are re printing, I guess, in air quotes, the um, enemy colored fetch lands. It's finally happening. Hallelujah. And I know a lot of people are like, well, this is going to be you know, $200 or something like that. That is true. This will be the definitive version of these fetch lands and those shock lands. The, the key here to remember, though, is that it, it will very easily, I, I very may well, we'll say, drive down the price of current and older versions of these fetches and shock lands because so many people are out to get these versions that it drives down the price. Now, you could also make the argument, obviously, that demand for these cards will temporarily rise because everyone's getting these. And a lot of dealer sides see these as, you know, oh, people want Misty Rainforest, we're going to up all the, the prices for all Misty Rainforests. But over time, it will definitely lead to a decrease in the price of older versions as people seek these versions over them. So, and all in all, it's a good thing and, and eventually, over time, will become, um, easier to join the fray in modern, I think. Um, just a slightly, slightly, but definitely. Here's Green Warden of Mirasa, and there's been a lot of mixed reaction to this card, but six mana's a lot. I know that six mana's a lot, okay? That's, that's a lot of mana. But that is crazy. <laughs> Do you not understand that? That's insane. It's got a great enter the battlefield effect. It's got a great when it dies effect. Sucks you have to exile it. I don't cry about that. Um, but just getting able to... Uh, two things back, like, remember when Den Protector came out and everyone was like, this might see some play, and now it's like top five cards in standard, it's that important. Um, obviously this is no Den Protector, but it comes into play around the same time that you'd flip up a Den Protector anyway, and if they happen to remove it, or if you remove it somehow, an Antuco Husk or something like that, then you get another thing out of your grave. There's so much value on the card, and it's a huge body that I'm not going to count this out. And, worst case scenario, it stays, you know, 50 cents or a dollar and doesn't get that much attention, and budget players can play it to great effect. So, one way or the other, the card's going to see some play in some decks. I'm not sure how incredibly competitive the card is. I could see it being a very important card. Also an elemental, which makes sense. In an Omnath deck, this is awesome. Here's Void Winner, like, lol, right? Like, what, what is going on with this thing? Like, they can't play Siege Rhinos, that's pretty cool. They can't play Languish, that's even cooler. Um, lots of stuff, I could just list it all off because there's a million cards they can't play. You know, they can't play most of their, you know, two, they can't play any other two drop creatures that they have in a top deck. Although this comes into play really, really late in the game, so I'm just not really sure how much effect it has. Like, who cares if they can't play Languish? You're playing, like, nine Toughness Eldrazi guys. That they're, they're far past the point of caring about Languish. Although Siege Rhino is important. There's lots of stuff. <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, but I'm just... We'll have to wait and see. I mean, obviously Commander wants something like this, and a, you know, maybe a Tron deck or something, but I'm just... I, I, I want to see it see play in standard. It's so crazy. The thing is so funky and weird. And I love that a card like this exists. I want to play it in standard, right? It just depends on, you know... How, how the format shapes out. It's really hard to call something like that. But either way, welcome to life, Void Winnower. You're going to be around in some formats for a while, Commander. Here's Catacomb Stifler. Just a really cool, you know, sort of a side grade to Reaper of the Wilds. You know, it doesn't regenerate that sucks, but it does cost less mana. That's pretty cool, and it's still got the, when your dudes die, you get to scry a thing. That's cool. You get, you know, basically three power for three mana. That's fine, you know, and there's lots of really cool things about the card, and it's got an inner the battlefield ability, so in some ways it's better than Reaper of the Wilds. Do like the card a lot, why not? It's really cool in the Golgari color combination, that is definitely the combination that wants something like this. And I want to say that I like this a little more than Reaper, and I'm a fan of Reaper. Here's Ulamog's Nullifier, and this thing's just really, really cool, right? I do think that that maybe pulling two things out of exile is fairly prohibitive, but that all depends. I mean, we've still got Delve in the format, so in some ways it's not. And in the Control Mirror, this can be really good because they're going to be playing Day Through Time, 
crimes, murderous cuts, and stuff like that. So later on in the game, this is very, very good, it turns out. And this will definitely see play. You know, it's a flying threat to in the late game. They've got to do something about it, especially, again, in the control mirror, where I think this definitely shines. Like the card. Here's Deathless Behemoth, and we're almost, we're in the home stretch now. Just one card after this. Uh, Deathless Behemoth, a lot of people are saying, like, this is a limited all-star, and it is a limited all-star, but we'll have to see about standard play. This is, you know, all these Eldrazi are sort of toss-ups for standard. I mean, six power for six mana. Colorless, any deck can play it. That's pretty cool. Um, it has vigilance. You know, usually things that are recursive like this can't even block. This can block and attack, and that's really, really cool. <laughs> so, you know, six power, six mana, that's fine. Can block and attack and recur. I just, I, I don't want to count this card out because it has a lot of power in it, you know, but I'm just not really sure if it will be, if it will find a slot against all the other Eldrazi that we see, you know, if you're building an Eldrazi deck, does this ultimately make the cut? And finally, because I haven't talked about it yet, this is Zada. <laughs> Zada is... Zada might be amazing, or Zada might not be great at all. You know, four mana is, is an awful lot in decks that want to play this card. Now, is it a good commander? Yeah, it's totally a good commander. But is it great in standard? I do think that it has potential to be a huge bomb in standard, but it also is, is fairly, you know, it's a, it's a paper tiger, is all I'm going to say. It's fairly removable. Here's a quick list of stuff that works with it. Actually, a long list because there's a lot of cards on it. But anyway, here's a list of stuff that works with it. Titan Strings, uh, Feet of Resistance, Enshrouding Mist, Mighty Leap is a really cool one. Become Immense is one that everyone's pointing out. Might of the Masses is kind of interesting. Defiant Strike is hilarious. You can draw a bunch of cards. Dance of the Skywise is a pretty interesting choice there. Refocus, you can draw a bunch of cards, and they, they're no longer tapped. Um, Teamer Battle Rage is probably the funniest thing you could do with it. Uh, Tread Upon is interesting. Valorous Stance, give your whole team indestructible for the turn. Arc Bond is freaking hilarious and everything that it implies, especially if you have creatures with lifelink or a Soulfire Grandmaster in play. Butcher's Glee is pretty funny, right? Um, Dragon Scale Boon is cute, for the same reason that Abzan Charm is cute. Touch of Moon Glove is pretty funny, right? You know, if they end up, you do this on blocks and you kill some guys with the Death Touch, you deal two damage multiple times. That's cool. Titanic Growth, of course. Dark Dabbling is one people are talking about. And the last one I've got written down, at least, is Tygum Strike. You're welcome for Tygum Strike. Imagine that. Um, but anyway, that's all I got. By the way, when you rebound the Tygum Strike, then you can target um, Zada again and do it again. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, Tygum Strike's hilarious, actually. But anyway, um, that's, that's all the cards that I have written down for it. And some of them are just Amazing in their implications. So try out Zadi. He's definitely got some potential, and we are we are testing with him currently. So don't worry. Um, that's all I've got <laughs> for today for spoilers. Um, there are some spoilers I left out, but most of them not too impactful. Um, we'll we'll have to wait and see. I didn't leave out too much. I did really a lot of interesting cards to talk about, and BFZ already looks amazing. We've only seen a little less than half the set. So stick with us. We got more of these coming up plus deck techs. I'm gonna let you guys vote. The fight right now is. Between mono red aggro post rotation, I'm going to do a budget and non budget double deck tech of that, or I'm going to do Mardu Dragons or Black Red Dragons. I haven't decided, probably Mardu Dragons. Seems like what people have more love for, so probably that. But anyway, I'm Dev from SVMTG. If you enjoyed the content, please do us a favor like, share, comment, subscribe. That's all we ask you to do. It helps us grow an awful lot, which we've been doing quickly, so thanks for that. Um, in any case, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, my wizard.